So what exactly is the gospel? Well, gospel means good news, and this good news is the central story and message of the Bible. But I thought the Bible is a collection of a lot of books written by a lot of authors across thousands of years. How can it have a central story and message? Yeah, the Bible has a lot of human authors, but it also has just one ultimate author, God. God inspired or breathed out all the books of the Bible in such a way that they all fit together perfectly, without any errors or contradictions, to teach us about God, ourselves, and the story of the gospel. Are you saying we can actually know who God is from the Bible? Exactly. One thing we learn is that God is a trinity, which means He exists as both one God and three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, at the same time. The three persons are each fully God in the sense that they each possess all of God's attributes, but they're also distinct from one another. Isn't that contradictory? The Trinity is something that we can't fully understand, but there's no contradiction because it says that God is one in a certain way and three in another way. I can accept that. God is also the creator of the universe, which he created to play out the story of the gospel. Guess that means the answer to life, the universe, and everything isn't actually 42. Nope. God is also holy, which means he's completely unique from his creation and infinite in every way. For example, in righteousness, power, and justice. Hebrews 12.29 gives us an image of God as a consuming fire. That sounds kind of scary. God's holiness should be scary to us since we are not holy because of sin. What's sin? Sin is disobedience to God's commands. Well, hold on, but didn't God create us? Why would he create people who sin? Because sin plays an important part in the gospel story. The good news is good news because it's an answer to the bad news Yay! of sin. God actually created the first human, Adam, without sin, but Adam sinned by disobeying God and eating the forbidden fruit. And when Adam sinned, he not only fell into sin himself, but he also represented the entire human race in his sin. So now we're all born with a sinful, selfish nature that doesn't want to obey God's commands. And what are these commands that we disobey? Most importantly, God commands us to have no other gods before him, which means he should be what's most important in our lives. I've definitely put things like myself, money, and other people before God. God also commands us to not get angry at others, be sexually immoral, lie, be jealous of what other people have, steal, or disobey our parents. I've done all these things. We all have. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the bad news is that we deserve punishment for our sin. What kind of punishment? The punishment for sin is hell, which is eternal torment. Revelation 14.11 describes what hell is like. It says, And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day or night. That seems unfair. Eternal punishment for sins I commit during my relatively short lifetime? The seriousness of our sin isn't just about how many sins we commit, but also who our sin is committed against. Our sin is against an infinitely holy and righteous God, which makes it infinitely serious and thus deserving of infinite punishment. That makes sense, but this is all pretty depressing. You said there's good news though, right? Yeah, the good news is that Jesus gives us a way to not only escape from the hell we deserve, but also to be loved and adopted by God as our loving Father and to experience eternal life in heaven with Him. I definitely need and want that. Who exactly is Jesus and what did He do? Jesus is God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. And at a certain point in history, Jesus became born as a man. So now he's both fully God and fully human. God became a human? Why? To save a group of people, his people, from sin and hell by living a perfect life, dying on the cross as a substitute sacrifice for sin, and then rising again on the third day, defeating sin and death once and for all. For this group of people, Jesus paid the penalty of their sin on the cross, suffering the hell that they deserve in their place, and they are also imputed or credited with Jesus' perfect righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, 
For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Wow, that sounds absolutely amazing. So can I be saved? In Mark 1.15, Jesus calls us to repent and believe in the gospel. If you repent and believe in the gospel, you will be saved. What does it mean to repent and believe in the gospel? To repent means to turn away from sin towards willing and joyful obedience to God. And to believe in the gospel means to trust or have faith in Jesus' saving work alone for our salvation and not at all in our own good works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. But if we're saved by faith alone, how do repentance and obedience fit into the picture? Both faith and repentance are part of a complete package of salvation that comes completely from God. This package of salvation includes regeneration, or God giving us a new nature that replaces our sinful nature. In John 3.3, Jesus says that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's this new nature that gives us the ability to have faith in the first place, and this new nature will always lead us to also want to repent of sin and obey God. So, what does it mean if I believe all of this and want to live for this God who's done such an incredible thing for me? That's awesome. It means that you can have confidence that God has saved you and that everything I just said about what Jesus has done for his people is true for you. I really do feel like a new person. So what should I do now? Well, here are three things to start. First, you'll want to grow in your relationship with God by regularly reading and studying the Bible. Second, you'll want to be in a community with other believers by regularly attending a local church. There are links in the description of this video to help you do these two things. Great, I'll check them out. And third, you'll want to share this good news of salvation from sin and hell with other people. One great way to start doing this is to share this video. I'll definitely do that.